Hi everybody, Kerry Harrison here with a brand new John Deere Turf Striper for 2014. This is the John Deere Z920M and it's got the 54 inch Pro 7 iron deck on it. We just completed designing and installing a turf striper for it and it's a little hard to see down in there but there it is and this one of course rolls it's not not one of those flaps or a broom or anything like that it's a steel roller and it rolls so it makes a beautiful stripe so we will have these available for the 60 inch uh, 7 iron deck as well just check our website for that but I'm going to continue on with this video here and show you how to install this guy. And this shows how you have to drill out the brackets for the anti-scalp wheels. Because the holes in them are just a little tiny bit too small for the 3 8 bolts we need for mounting the turf striper. So you can see that I just ran a 3 8 drill through each of the holes there. It's real easy to do because there's very little metal that needs to be re removed. Now here's the whole turf striper kit assembled. On this side you see I've got the, the bearing bracket with the bearing mounted on it, installed, and the eccentric locking collar. Over on this end, I still have it laying there because I wanted to explain this eccentric locking collar a little bit. You'll see that the back side, or one side of the collar is cupped, and that side fits over this part of the bearing. And then when this is turned, it'll lock. So this has to be installed so that the cup surface is facing out. See how I did that there? And then this bearing will slip on like so. And we can just leave it loose at this point, but when we're going to install this, we'll have to slide this bearing, or the locking collar up on the bearing, rotate it a little bit until it slips onto the bearing. There, it just slipped on. And then we'll tighten it. And the way you tighten it is you roll the roller in the direction that it's going to be turning while holding on to the eccentric locking collar until it binds onto the bearing. And then you take a center punch like this. And there's a hole just for this in there. It's not the hole that's got the set screw in it, of course. There's another hole. And you drive, uh, you drive the eccentric locking collar in the direction that you turned it to tighten it. You just give it a little wrap and that locks it in place. Then you turn the roller around until you expose the set screw and tighten the set screw. Then the shaft is locked to the bearing. So now we'll go ahead and put it under the machine. All right, I've got the roller underneath the machine now. And you'll see I've set the height at three inches. Now what I'm doing here is I'm assuming that we're gonna mow the lawn at three and a half inches and I want the striper roller to be half inch off the ground. So we'll set the we'll set the mower height at three inches and then we'll put the roller right on the ground just like it is and then you can see I've got the wet hole I've got that bolt in. We'll just slip this slide this back in here like this and you'll see that that bolt it's a little hard to do with one hand but it'll drop right in, so that's that bolt. And then this one will go in the bottom hole. Well, I put it in the wrong hole. There we go, it'll slide right in. And then we can put our nuts on, tighten it up. So now, of course, when I, when I raise this to three and a half inches, the roller will have a half inch clearance on the ground. And you can see that I've already done the same thing over here. Of course, if you're gonna mow at different heights, then you'll wanna change it. But you know, this, this way of installing it works good, no matter what uh, height you're gonna set it at. I'm gonna just go ahead and raise the mower to three and a half here. And you'll be able to see that now we've got clearance down here. You can see where I can stick my fingers under there. So that's going to be the proper height. And actually, this setting here, it turns out, is going to work 
for pretty much every application. So now it's just a matter of tightening the bolts, tightening up the eccentric locking collar. See if I can show you how to do that again here. I don't know if we have quite enough light in here. I got a light here, we'll move over into position. Let's see if I can show you that. This is loose on here. Actually, before I do this, this the roller needs to get centered between the brackets. I goofed here, so I gotta, I gotta center the roller between the brackets before I can tighten this locking collar. All right, now to center the roller, the best way to do that is to tighten up all the brackets. Make sure that, of course, when we, when we mounted the bearings on the bearing bracket, we got those bolts tight. Now I wanna tighten these bolts here and do that on both sides. And, after, and you do that with the roller in the bearings on both ends and you'll find out that the bearings are self-aligning within the flange. So as you tighten these, they will find their own alignment and they'll become perfectly aligned with each other because the shaft on the roller is passing through each bearing. So then the easiest way to, uh, to align it and to get it even side to side, so just tap it with a dead blow hammer and you can see how easy I can punch that over. Let me get a little closer here. It'll just slide over and it should be about flush with the end there which it is, we'll run over to the other side and take a look. And sure enough, it's about the same right there. So now it's just a matter of tightening those eccentric locking collars down. So I'll show you how to do that. You need a punch, a center punch, or just a regular drift. Now the secret on this is slide the collar over to the bearing and we're gonna we're going to the roller rotates this way as we're running so we want to turn this collar the opposite way and slide it up it already slipped on I want to slide it up onto the bearing there it just slipped on I'll keep rotating it I'm rotating it back that way so it's the opposite the direction that this roller travels so the roller travels this way the bearing needs to lock in the opposite direction. Then you just roll it around. There's the set screw hole, and there's this kind of the little divot for setting it. Now you lock it in position by just using a center punch like this. I'm going to rotate it back a little bit. Center punch or just a drift. And then just give it a whack with a hammer. You don't have to go crazy, but you just give it a whack with a hammer, and I can't do that because I'm holding the camera on the other hand. So anyway, you get the idea. Give her a whack, then rotate it around. Use your Allen wrench and tighten that set screw down. Repeat the process on the other side and you're ready to go. Your lawns are gonna look beautiful. Hey, thanks for watching my video and thanks for buying a turf striper from me. I really appreciate it.